I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. And today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Matt Wisniewski, founder and CEO of Satellite IM. Welcome to the show, Matt, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Ashton. Glad to be here. You're very welcome. Let's dive into instant messaging. How do we move from you know WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and all of these uh, messaging platforms that are controlled by the, the technology oligarchy into something that helps us preserve more of our information you know, involves Web3 identities, encryption, uh, and all that stuff that is really necessary because I know there's a lot of flaws in sort of Web2 messengers right now. I'm really interested to hear what you and your team at Satellite IAM have been working on in this regard. And I would love to kick it off by just hearing yeah. a little bit on, you know, an overview on, on how you would explain Satellite to somebody who's just getting into Web3 and they're familiar with using all these instant messaging systems. How would you explain Satellite to them? Yeah, well, first to kind of give a, a broad answer to your intro question, I think the way that you uh, kind of take back that ownership is build a product that's better than uh, the Web2 alternatives. Like, mm. you know, you, you don't use crypto as a scapegoat, you truly build a better product. And then it's uh, a really nice icing on, on the top of the cake that, hey, it's built on top of uh, decentralized tech. But um, yeah, what we've done at Satellite is we've kind of gone from the ground up. Um, we really just kind of went back to the protocol level and put a bunch of tools together um, and built kind of our own little SDK that allowed us to build um, different platforms on top of it. So uh, we have a truly agnostic backend. You can run it on Ethereum, Solana, Matic, whatever you want. Um, and from there, it plugs directly into our UIs that we've built. Um, so the minimal effort, you really just make one file to support the chain or whatever you want to support. Um, we'll obviously have a slew of them that we support. And then from there, you uh, you have a bunch of user-friendly apps that really you don't have to understand anything about crypto or blockchain to use. And you can chat in 4K, um, really 8K, 16K, whatever your computer can handle. Um, lossless audio, we, uh, we're going to include um, creator tools. So you can record to Flack or you can record to uh, 4K, record meetings, you know, to, to MP4s with separated audio tracks. So really just kind of um, bringing what exists in the current web2 architecture uh reaching feature parity and then doing it better um after we've reached parity is kind of our goal um and then of course you know having no kyc having no ownership of that data is super important to us mm -hmm. um the application currently and always will work if we don't exist in the future um i think that you know uh having your app only work with uh with the company's involvement is like uh a uh, non-future proof way to exist as a company. Um, we truly want to continue to build the best software and that's kind of what we're focused on. Wow, that's an incredible intro, Matt. And it's great to hear about uh, all those benefits, including being able to choose the blockchain technology and obviously having a user experience that makes it easy to use, friendly to use, and, and hopefully don't have to understand too much about the blockchain technology. You know, uh, one of the reasons why you know, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger work so well is because my grandma can message me whenever she wants and, you know, she doesn't really need to understand about the blockchain. Um, and, you know, it, obviously um, it wasn't an overnight success for any of those applications either. You know, they still have to build up the network effect. Um, but uh, eventually you'd think, you know, these are the kinds of applications that could be used by billions of people and everybody in the world. Yeah, that's the, you know, we've got practically grandmas on contract uh, to, to test out the app. Like that was, uh, you know, one of the things that comes up in, in most of our meetings is, you know, grandma's not going to know what a DID key is. Grandma's not going to know what a seed phrase is. Like we need to find better ways to store and back these up and give users options. You know, should we allow them to save it to camera roll automatically? Like, should we tell them how to save it and put it in a safe? Like really like make the application like as crypto free as possible um, in the UI experience, but really leverage it as a technology in the back end. And the primary reason for that is, you know, crypto is a wonderful place. There's so many great projects, but there's also a bunch of scams and there's also a bunch of things that have burned the name of crypto um, in the past. And I think it's important for us to win people back over and show them that crypto could be more than money making schemes and, you know, trying to flip a quick buck and, and gambling. Um, and in order to do that, we really need to make sure that the front end is, you know, 
completely agnostic to that it it should be a super easy to use platform and at that point we get people to actually use the platform and test it before having any preconceived judgment about oh crypto is annoying because they're the reason i can't buy gpus you know it's not true but uh you know there, there's plenty of reasons why people may be turned off to even give a crypto application a chance in this mm -hmm. this current timeline and i don't think all of it's unwarranted um, but in building where crypto is kind of behind the scenes, you know, we save that judgment until they find out later and they may go, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, I didn't have to, like, spend any money. Like, they didn't try to sell me, like, you know, an NFT. Like, this is cool. And then, you know, we kind of win them over that way. <laughs> That's great to hear. And I, I want to go back to what you said at the beginning about just making a better product overall. And, and I'm guessing that your team has sort of analyzed the, the most popular apps and, and and there's always some complaints that people have. Um, what do you think are the main problems with the Web2 Messenger that uh, Satellite solves? Is it just the you know, censorship and freedom of speech or the, the way that the, they take your information for advertisers as, as sort of Facebook is notorious for now and you know, turn you into the product and sell you stuff? Um, what needs to be removed for the people that are using WhatsApp, you know, those billion people to sort of move over to Web3 Instant Messenger? Yeah, there, there's a couple. Um, I think for me, I would say personally to like my ethos, yeah, the privacy and extent and like, you know, security and stuff like that is the most important to me. Um, but I don't think that we've reached a point where that is the consensus for the general public. You know, I think people will wake up. I actually have a, a quick sidebar that kind of lends to this. And I lost my premium subscription to YouTube um, for, you know, a, a little bit. I had like a privacy.com card and it like it, whatever so um i had to watch some ads and it was shocking how far it's come from like we would make jokes about talking about like a certain thing and then it being advertised to you but now it is like so blatant um but so for me that's really important um not having any trackers and things like that are, are are really important but there's a slew of things that um the general person may care about more you know you'll find when you're talking to grandma or someone she doesn't really care about her privacy um she cares about things not being frustrating and things being easy to use and i think for the general public um you know the uh, young to middle age to older they, a lot of people don't really care about privacy unfortunately so what we also include and it's really a, a a battle for which is my favorite is we've built this thing to be extensible from the ground up uh we've, we've wanted this thing to be something that's hyper modular and something that anyone can customize to be whatever they want um and what that really lends to is a way better experience when using the application if you go on and use something like telegram whatsapp discord um, and you want some additional functionality you build a bot and Discord is like, you know, they're proud of the fact that now like you can do a slash command and it has a UI for all the available things or it has like a little like highlight for the query. We've kind of decided to scrap that whole thing and make extensions, modify the entire functionality of the application. So if you use Travis CI or something for your dev build environments, you should be able to have an actual channel where those, you know, builds go and you can actually view them and click it around. If you want to add a Spotify extension so you can sync up your Spotify accounts and listen together in a group chat and adjust the, vo the volume for everybody, you can build that. It doesn't have to be a slash play command. It's literally a play button and like you go into your friend group and you can see like a little mini satellite themed like Spotify player or whatever. Like really, we wanted this platform to kind of not be decided by us. We wanted the future of the platform to be decided by the community. Um, and I think the best way to, to foster that is with things like extensions and, and customization. Um, I guess one quick thing before I uh, before I move on here is like, we, we really looked at things like uh, Minecraft and Skyrim and all these games, you know, the reason these these simple things that aren't really like that much more powerful than the competition kind of existed for so long, in my personal opinion, is because of these extensions, because of these mods and plugins, you can hop in Minecraft and let's say you wanted to teach like I don't know, agriculture or something, there's probably a mod to make realistic water and realistic droughts and like all these things. Like It's insane. Like you would never like need this in a children's game. But if you want to go make a nuclear reactor or something, go ahead, like work on like sustainable, renewable energy and like a, a block game. Like that's kind of the same thing we're doing here is we really think that the key to the success of this platform is we'll foster and build a really solid foundation for people and they come and build the house on top of that foundation however they want. 
um, and make it easy for other people to walk in their house and experience what they built. If someone wants to share their extension packs or whatever, they can do that. If you're a creator and you have a couple of things you're passionate about and you want people to use those extensions on your platform, uh, you can make it so when they join your community, it suggests certain extensions. You can choose whether or not to install them, but it's an easy way for you to share um, what you're trying to build your community into. So, um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, people care about a lot of different things, but I think the best way to please everybody, uh, long story short, is to make the platform easy to customize, make it easy to make theirs. And that's kind of been a, a huge focus for us uh, on top of the privacy and security aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great analogy that you have there to, to Skyrim and Minecraft and sort of, you know, making that infrastructure in a way that people can customize it. And once you have that network effect, um, you're right, you know, the, those customization packs and sort of making the game how you want uh, is part major part of the reason why you know it's had a multi cycle multi length cycle of why the game is still so popular you know decade later um, and it can definitely get carried away if the company themselves try to just keep making features you know I, I know like a lot of startups that like, well, a customer requested this, so we're going to build that. And then a customer requested something else, so we're going to keep building. And like you're building things that you don't really know for sure if that's going to be a main function that everyone's going to use, or you're spending a lot of time developing something that not a lot of people are going to use. So I find that approach of being able to build the infrastructure where, hey, you can build your own stuff if you want and, and sort of use it. I feel like that is, is a great approach as long as it, you know, the benefits outweigh the cost. And, you know, talking about Absolutely. all these extra functionalities i feel like they're all great i just wanted to cover uh the sort of the basics to see you know if satellite is sort of built in everything that the other ones have built in like for example you have single messages you have group messages you have like video call could you do group video call or you know what are the limitations and where you're expecting satellite to go yeah i our, our kind of like um i guess like main feature list um, I would say is direct messages, group messages, um, and then we'll, I'll leave communities till the end because there's a lot there, but um, direct messages, group messages, um, you know, direct video, um, group video, uh, we really want to leave the groups uncapped, like you could have a group with like a million people in it if you wanted to, like probably should make a community, but you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, and um, really, uh, I guess on top of that, file storage um that's like a given like a lot of our architecture is currently based upon ipfs and it kind of makes sense to have some you know file storage capabilities so um we're going uh pretty hard on that we've kind of switched the model places like discord and things like that have a model excuse me of um you have like this much per file to upload like you can do an eight megabyte file or i think they recently like touted that like they have a hundred megabytes of like their tier or whatever um instead we give free users a four gigabyte storage bucket um you can upload a four gigabyte fi file to that bucket if you want um really with the goal that in most cases when people are just collaborating and working you really only need that file for the moment um you may be sharing a meme or you may be sharing like you know, here's the podcast, like for your editor or something like that. So as you kind of work, you can choose to go on like a rolling delete schedule. So as you know, you put new things in, it'll say, hey, your storage is full. Do you want to go ahead and unpin or, you know, we keep it transparent, delete this file um, from your storage and then, hey, you can keep rolling. And then, of course, if you want to upgrade to like a two terabyte tier or something like that, like that's mm -hmm. that's on the table. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, the goal really top to bottom, we're gonna have all the functionality of um, web two, like that's the first goal. And I think it's the first um, kind of responsible goal is to reach parity. Um, and once we've reached parity, we're gonna go through, make sure everything is perfect, you know, uh, bug free. Um, and then from there, that's when we really start to talk about adding like these, you know, nice to haves on top of it. Um, but yeah, there's, there's hopefully there's gonna be in-app payments, um you know which exact provider we go through to facilitate that is still to be decided but um you know options like circle um exist mm -hmm. um and yeah I, I mean top to bottom we're gonna try to make sure that we reach you know parity with all of these apps 
Um, we realized that people want to keep things simple. So we have our core application, which is more akin to something like Discord. Uh, but then we also have Uplink, which is our smaller, more minimal application, which is more akin to something like Telegram or WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can you know talk between both of them. Uh, but there may be some functionality that is decidedly limited in those applications for people that just want a quick place to chat with family and friends. Um, so it's really about options. And uh, like I said, if you want to disrupt uh, and actually bring something from the crypto space or the blockchain space to the masses, it's got to be better than Web2. Um, the average person isn't going to switch because it's more private or because it's built on top of blockchain. The average person is going to switch because, hey, we need to switch. Um, you know, it's it's better. It's cheaper for us to use this it has higher quality video you know the podcasts look and sound better on satellite there's going to be a multitude of reasons that are just genuine hey i should switch over to this and then you know it just so happens it's built on top of blockchain and crypto and you can you know if you do want gated access and things like that it's you know maybe five minutes work to add you know an nft gated access to your community or something like that it's that really does come second and it's not because we don't love crypto it's just because as a business we we understand how we have to to disrupt this market and it is by truly being the best without you know the best to people who don't know what web 2 and web 3 are which is the majority of human beings on the planet uh, and that's kind of what we're targeting definitely and i think that's a great approach matt and I, I don't know if i speak for a lot of the blockchain native people when i say that they're tired of switching to the blockchain app for increased privacy but it's never as good as you know the web 2 one in terms of just the user experience and the functionality and that's part of the reason why the, net the network effect is still prevailing on those web 2 apps so many people are using it because it's easy to use yeah it has negatives in you know the privacy or the the advertising and things but people they're you know they're, they're lazy they're just like let's just use the easiest thing possible um and and trying to make a better user experience for blockchain applications, you know, whether they have blockchain in the back or not, um, I, I feel like is the most important thing. And, you know, I personally don't use payments inside of, you know, social messaging platforms, but I'm quite curious on uh, your team's approach that you messaged there, you, you mentioned about the payments. Um, there's, uh, you know, obviously cryptocurrency payments. Um, I'm curious if there's some satellite governance payment uh, default on there as well, but I'm also curious if you're going to be including fiat payments or you know PayPal banking things like that. And does that sort of ruin the integrity of, of a blockchain-based application? If so, no, I don't think it does. And I think that um, you know we we're going to strive to include fiat payments um, really uh options like options 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 that's that's kind of our focus um you know without spreading ourselves thin we want to give the users different abilities so um we're going to target fiat payments it's just we've kind of you know as a community uh dug ourselves in a hole with the, the banking institutions and being able to support those it often comes with jumping over a bunch of regulatory uh hurdles so you know uh, i'd be lying if i said we have it all figured out right now but it's certainly a goal um you know finding the right partner to help facilitate those fiat payments is what's most important and you know that kind of bleeds into everything we do you know there's going to be areas where web 2 is just better or the only option uh, right now it could be built differently but unless bank accounts start allowing you to have a, a you know a, a wallet address associated to them it's still going to require some web 2 centralized like intervention we're going to have to have some api key that satellite uses to access that you know payment portal so all these things that kind of become caveats to using totally crypto projects we're going to include as toggles you know similar to if you're signing up for windows or you know you're reinstalling mac and it goes through would you like to use apple's location services do you want to use find my mac same sort of thing do you want to allow satellite to you know facilitate these payments like do you want to allow um, satellite to include sync nodes to increase the performance. Do you want to allow, you know, this, that, and other things? We want to make them options. There will be some things that unfortunately still need to remain web two. Um, but all those things that remain web two should be able to be turned off with a click of a button um, for anyone that's using the application. Um, the only caveat, we do have one caveat, and I'm not ashamed of it. Um, we do file scanning um, for anything that has our brand name on it. We, we scan the files um, as they're encrypted. We don't actually decrypt them. And um, we run them through a, a company called Safer currently, which just pretty much makes sure there's no child content, CSAM content. 
Um, and that's something we're pretty, you know, uh, pretty dead set on not allowing on the platform. Um, so outside of that, uh, you know, everything that is somewhat centralized, you know, even know those files, like they, like it was a big thing with Apple back in the day that, oh, they're looking through your, your, your pictures on your phone to make sure there's no CSAM content, but people were worried that like, well, what if I took a picture of my, you know, baby in the bath because I'm like a mother, like that's not weird, but it could still be flagged. We we look at the encrypted version of that file and for all the uh this is my personal viewpoints not satellite for all the the bad that our government does the, the you know there are some good things and they have public databases you can check those hashes against so you never actually have to look at the files we don't have to have people like physically moderating files and mm -hmm. you know doing that we just say hey this encrypted hash matches the encrypted hash of this file that is known to be bad um but i digress uh we we, we basically make everything options except for the most heinous of things to our political belief if, if um, you know, you don't agree with us, fork our code, remove the code. But, you know, if we're going to put our name on it, we're going to have, you know, some minimal uh, things in there just to protect our users. Definitely, definitely. Well, I do like that approach of having uh, file storage uh, with instant messaging. You know, normally uh, people aren't expecting that large of a file storage, you know, like, uh, like Dropbox level where you're getting terabytes as well as your instant messenger and be able to store your files there. I feel like that's a, a nice, you know, sort of all-in-one approach. Um, now- Yeah, it, it's, it's time to switch, right? You know, flash yeah. drives used to cost $200 for a terabyte. Now they cost like 15 bucks. Like yeah. the, the, the digital world has to catch up. We have, you know, uh, my previous neighborhood had three gigabyte internet in like a small town, West Virginia. Like, uh, you know, if we're reaching those kind of speeds, like it's time to start taking, you know, uh, the, the, the internet to the next level, I think places like discord are really like in the past here like 100 megabytes is not a lot i think their free tier used to be eight megabytes which is like you know a, an iphone picture is like 30 megabytes like it's just it's time to move on um and we want satellite to kind of be the leader in that space definitely well i applaud you for that uh, and now we talked about all these amazing functions and obviously there's a lot to do to get all of it into fruition and get hundreds of millions of people using it. Um, can you talk about where you guys are at right now? I saw that there's a pre-release and sort of, you know, what are the next steps of uh, the next versions of the application? Yeah, we, we currently are in the pre-release stage. Um, it includes the web version of our application. Um, I can't personally guarantee this timeline. By the time the podcast comes out, it, it, you know, you'll be able to maybe tell if I was right or not. But um, we're hoping to, by the end of this week, have a version of our native applications people can test. Um, which will be the uplink versions um, that will work on Android and um, the desktop version will work on your toaster as well as, um, you know, Mac, uh, Windows, uh, Linux, um, all these things. We're really like focusing like a run anywhere architecture. Um, it's all built on top of Rust, which is a systems level language. So, you know, you can do things like put satellite on a, you know, a, a, a badge or something like that. You can have like your profile show up on like a little Arduino powered badge, like, you know, really making the application run anywhere first. Um, People can try it out at any time. We're entirely open source. Um, we're Creative Commons non-commercial. So fork our code, you know, use it for whatever you want. If you're, you know, a, an angel and you really want to find your way into our hearts, like submit a pull request, like add some features. Um, we're totally transparent along the way. But for those that aren't uh, maybe as tech savvy, we will be releasing um, downloads to, to follow along uh, weekly um for the native application so we're getting close um we're, we're actually talking right now at a really exciting time we're kind of like meeting that point where we finally get to show the world like the things we've been building over the past year and it's really exciting amazing i'm literally looking forward to it as well i i will leave the link to the platform and the social media channels if people are interested in talking to the community and, and learning more uh, in the description box below as well Thank you so much for the insights into you know instant messaging and i'm really looking forward to seeing uh you know satellite grow because i i've been meaning for more uh blockchain you know encryption privacy focused uh and, f and function focused and user experience focused uh, instant messaging platforms and i think that this is going to be a great one so thank you to you and your team for working on this and let's follow up in the near future matt absolutely and thank you for all the kind words uh hopefully you know next time we chat we'll be chatting on satellite be pretty exciting. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you.